Hello everybody! Welcome to another watercolor tutorial. I'm going to show you how to go from this one-dimensional tree into a beautiful more 3D looking tree um, by adding uh, shadows and just in general value to the tree. So I'm going to quickly switch that out for a regular piece of paper and we're going to get right into it. So this idea actually came from one of my uh, workbooks that are available on Etsy uh, for purchase. So these, this is one of the items in that workbook, the Woodland Watercolor Workbook. So the first step is quite simple. We're just going to paint the trunk of the tree first. And so I'm taking some brown, mixing it with a little bit of black, this part doesn't matter too, too much because um, it's just the trunk of the tree. So you can just go ahead and paint um, just a line that tapers off slowly towards the bottom. So we're going to paint this line just straight up like so. And then we're going to have two branches that come off of it at different heights like so that part doesn't matter too too much there we go so we're going to let this dry simply because part of our tree is going to be painted um, over top of it. So we don't want uh, the brown to mix with the green. Okay, so my tree trunk is mostly dry. It's okay if it's not totally dry. It's not the biggest deal in the world. And you're going to just take a light green. I've taken a lime green, um, but any like light green will do. Uh, and in this situation, you do want to have at least two greens, one that is more light in color and then a darker one as well. But if you only have one green, you can make this work as well just by adding black, which we're going to do anyway to our darker green. So we're going to begin by creating like almost a cone shape. It's going to be, I would say, a rounded triangular tree. So I started with the tip of my tree the top of the cone and I'm just going downwards it's going to overlap with our tree trunk a little bit it's gonna go down on the sides here like this it's gonna come up a bit in the center and then go back down on the other side so here we're just painting our jump it's like an upside down heart almost and then I know this looks very uh, childlike at the moment but once you've got your general shape, you gotta work quickly so that it doesn't dry and you don't have like this harsh line all the way around. But we are just dabbing the exterior of the perimeter of what we just painted to create a textured border for our tree. And this makes it look like there are leaves on our tree that are sticking out like a very bushy looking tree. And try not to make it super symmetrical. Like mine looks a little bit symmetrical here. I don't like that. So I'm gonna make this side a little more plump. There we go. When you're happy with that, you wanna work quickly, unless you have cotton paper, which I have, then it won't dry as quickly. But you're going to grab your darker green. I don't have a dark green that I like. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm mixing my lime green with the kind of bluish green I have with a little bit of black. 
and that's creating more of the the type of green that I'm going for and what we're gonna try to do is apply that to kind of the bottom portion of our tree primarily like so but we're also going to you know try to create the illusion of um, texture and layers and and depth in our tree like depth within the tree by itself that you know certain clusters of branches are sticking out and are closer to the viewer than others you don't want to cover the entire tree because then that will totally defeat the purpose of the first layer you can also because I was using my size 14 for that entire process but you can switch to a smaller brush by all means and add some more fine leafy details with that darker green at the bottom. You can even have some little dots coming off of it. It could look, I mean, you can in interpret that any way you want. It could either be some leaves that have come loose or I don't know. It can be whatever you want it to be, but I like the look of just some dots. Don't go crazy with it. Just, you know, makes it look like the tree isn't perfect. Or the artist. The artist also isn't perfect. So I'm just taking, taking that same green and just dropping it at the bottom as well as all the places that I added it to my tree because as it dries and spreads it loses some of that uh, intensity. So already, that's, this is just our second layer and it's already looking so much better and like there's so much more mm, depth in the tree itself than when we just planted, uh, planted. <laughs> then when we just painted it with one color. Um, so this next part, it's a little tricky to get the timing right. We want it to dry a little bit, but not so much that when we put more color down, it won't spread and blend into the surrounding areas. So we want to leave it and let it dry just a little bit. Because if we were to put on our third layer now, it would just continue spreading quite a bit into the existing areas. And we could be laying on the color and laying on the color and like constantly adding more color. And we would just never achieve the intensity that we're trying to achieve because it would just, you'd keep adding moisture and keep, it would keep spreading, keep spreading. So let's let it dry just, just a tad bit. Like even this part would already be ready, but this part I can see it's very moist. There's quite a bit of moisture. So just let's let it sit for a little bit and we'll come back and um, add the next layer. Okay, I'm gonna say that I waited probably two to three minutes, but I have cotton paper. So if you don't have cotton paper, you can definitely still achieve this look, but you have to be a lot more careful with um, the speed in which your paper dries because cotton tends to hold moisture a lot better than non-cotton watercolor paper. So, you know, that's why it's ideal for watercolorists because it, it allows you the time to achieve all the little details that you want. It doesn't dry super quick. Um, so just be mindful of that. So I've taken that green that I used in my second layer and I added quite a bit of black to it. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing we did in our second layer, but trying to stick to more of the edge than we did in the second layer. So I'm just applying that darker color in that bottom area, just like we did in the second layer. I'm doing it again in that uh, midsection but I'm not doing it, um, how do I explain this? In the same surface area, I guess. Like 
Here you can see it's spread out to be about this big in the second layer. I don't want to cover my second layer with the third layer because then it totally defeats the purpose of the second layer. So I'm not applying it to the same um, the same like surface area of the tree. Do, do you know what I mean? And again, I'm applying some dots to make it look like there are leaves or something coming off of the tree. So that looks, that looks really great in my opinion. I love that. What I'm going to do is take even more black now. Not a lot of water. That's the key to this part, especially if you don't want to keep waiting between layers. You just got to keep picking up more pigment, not a lot of water, because the more water that you pick up, the more it's going to spread out, um, take over your initial layers, which will defeat the purpose of the whole process. And um, it'll just take forever because it'll keep spreading out instead of concentrating and creating these intense layers that we're putting on to create depth in our tree. And here you can already see, you can see our original lime green layer, you can see the second layer, and the, the third and the fourth layer are kind of starting to blend together a little bit, but that's okay. You can stop here by all means, but I just know that this is going to dry to be a lot lighter than it looks right now. So those intense um, last layer black details that we applied, they're not gonna look as intense as they do now when this dries. So I'm gonna be patient. I'm gonna, you know, slowly let it, let it dry. I'm going to grab a more pigmented watercolor. So all it's almost pure black at this point and I'm dropping it just on the very edges because it's going to spread regardless, but I don't want it to spread and overtake all of the um, third layer that we've already dropped. Just the, mo the closest part, like the closest to the center of the layers that we've already applied. And you can see it's already dried here. Uh, so I can't really apply anything there because it's not going to spread out naturally, unfortunately. So I'm going to just try to remedy that by pretending that was intentional. <laughs> but there we go. I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm going to leave it like this after that last tiny bit of touch up. And there we go. We turned a very flat, one dimensional looking tree into this really textured, not so much textured, but you know, you can really see the depth in the tree simply based on the shadows that we created within the clusters of the tree. I hope you guys found this one helpful. Um, if you did, please let me know in the comments. I love reading your comments. Um, hit like on this video, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.